All right, so we're going to be starting this next game uh, between UMCP and UMBC, the two University of Maryland's in the Collegiate Star League, duking it out for the first spot in the division. And this is going to be the 2v2 match, Scorched Haven. We're going to have uh, over here our pink Terran player. I know, oh, looks like Roar actually stole Sirene's color. Um, uh, so Roar is going to be playing as our pink Terran player for University of Maryland College Park. And his ally is going to be the red Pronos player, Asian Skittles. And their opponents are going to be from the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Uh, Attila going to be playing as the blue Zerg player. His ally is going to be the teal Terran player, Sirene. And this map is a very interesting one. Um, you do get your own ramp over here. You can easily choke it off if you are playing uh, Terran Terran or Terran Protoss and uh, grab your natural expansions very easily. But there is no way in heck you're ever going to take a third base. Come follow me on where the third bases are. Let's move all the way into the center of the map where there are gold bases that have ledges all around and gigantic ramps, uh, ramps leaving down. There's also a, another base over here that does have a Zelnaga tower, but it's really close to your opponents by drops or anything. And then there's this really odd third base that only one of you can take and still be extremely vulnerable to drops, especially if you're going for a ground army. So that's my map analysis of these absolutely horrible 2v2 maps. Blizzard do something about this. Looks like uh, they're not going to do that anytime soon, though. Uh, Sirene throwing up his barracks and his gas right now. Um, 2v2s are really prone to cheese, um, but uh, Roar is, and his allies, Asian Skittles, are doing exactly what I was talking about. This is what I do with my allies uh, when I do play on ladder, and I also... Um, get pooled by my Terran ally. He grabs all three of these expansions. I go up to 25 gateways, and we do a one-time uh, 50 stalker blink push. <laughs> Alright, so Asian Skittles is mining the gas right now as well. He's getting a pylon up at the top. Oh yeah, by the way, there's this gigantic area where if your ally is Zerg, you can place a pylon, and just warp into the main. And usually people are not paying attention to that and they just rage and quit, essentially. Bunker coming up for a Roar, so it looks like they're going to be going for a little bit of long-term play. Uh, possibly throwing up some pretty quick expansions behind this bunker. And Attila over here grabbing his speed. Extremely necessary build here. And it looks like there's a Baneling Nest coming up for Attila, this may be a Baneling bust. They're going to try to bust through this supply depot and funnel all their units through here to be able to take down this wall and take the game. Another pylon coming up for Asian Skittles. There's just enough space here, I think, for a Zealot to seal that spot as well so that he can actually Baneling bust this area as well. SCV4 Roar is checking for any sort of natural expansion. A couple of Zerglings going to be uh, running down here. Looks like they were not on A move, and that uh, SCV is going to be able to run in here and see the not a Baneling's Nest. Looks like that was cancelled. 2v2s are actually kind of difficult to cast. It's hard to remember what everyone's doing. Looks like Asian Skittles throwing up two additional gateways right now to help defend a possible expansion, but this might just be a, a feign of an expansion. If he goes up to one more gateway, it's going to be a four gate, and his opponent is getting up a starport. He does have two gas, so we may be seeing some Banshees real soon. The Zerglings are running forward. They will see this wall off and uh, turn back and know that it's just going to be some long-term play. That's what I think the Zerg player would think. And the Supply Depot now coming up at the front. Going to continue to spot this location. Does he have an Overlord anywhere nearby? It's not moving at all, so he's not going to be able to see that there is the possibility of Banshees, but it looks like it's going to be a standard Marine tank push along with a ton of Protoss support. Bunker coming up for Siren. He's got a couple of Hellions out in the field as well. He's building a command center for himself. Going to be landing that at his natural expansion in just a second. Siege tanks coming out. No siege tech yet. 
Um, he just finished uh, grabbing that gas, and he has begun mining from it as well. Second factory coming up for Siren. His first sea shank will be out shortly. And uh, looks like one Hellion did just go down. And the expansion being taken by Asian Skittles and the expansion coming up for Roar. So UMBC is actually going to be ahead in this case. I'm not sure why uh, Skittles actually went up to four gateways before expanding. Well, and there's the load up from that medevac will be headed across the map to see how much damage it can do. There is the Siege Shank and they're not too sure what he's doing with that one. His Siege Tech is... Is it complete? I don't think so. No Siege Tech from him right now. And Lair Tech on the way for Attila. He's also grabbing a Baneling's Nest now. Where is that Medivac drop? I'm looking for it. I thought he lo looks like he did uh, unload it back here. Looks like he is trying to defend against a possible run by with those Zerglings. It's going to be really heavy mech out of Siren in this game. He's getting an engineering bay up as well. Second barracks uh, on the way. Going to be continue continuing to pump out those marines. A little bit of a, a move out to buy Roar. He's trying to see how much damage he can do here uh, to kill off a couple of those Zerglings. A couple of Protoss units joining, joining the fray as well. Natural expansion now uh, coming up and mining for Skittles should be transferring a couple of workers over there as he is very well saturated. He's doing a nice job patrolling with these two stalkers, making sure that he doesn't get dropped over there. Zerglings are being forced back for Attila and Siren securing this location with a single sea shank scan going down. We'll see this uh, position over here. Uh, this may trigger Roar to actually push along with his Protoss ally. There's not much over here for Siren and Attila. More Sea Shanks on the way for both players. Spire on the way for Attila as well. A Stim Pack coming up for Siren. More uh, Vikings and a Tech Lab on the way for that barracks will allow him to get some of those infantry upgrades. He doesn't yet have any of those. So no Combat Shield, no Stim Pack, nothing. Looks like um, the Terran player Siren is grabbing his uh, plus one infantry weapons right now. Zerglings continuing to be restless. They need some ADHD uh, medicine like Adderall. You know, stay still a little bit. Muto's popping out for Attila right now. Spire is complete, so he will be able to do some harassment. Looks like Siren and Attila are going to begin pushing right now. The Mutos are going to be a distraction in the back, and if they uh, try to counter just the Mutos, this will bust through the front. And if they try to defend against this, the Mutos will do a ton of harassment, especially if you just um, move all of the stuff to the, towards the back. The Mutos are going to be running in here, and there's a couple of Stalkers already. And here comes the siege up from uh, Siren. He's going to be sieging one tank at a time getting a nice position there this is going to be very difficult for roar and uh, asian skittles to actually bust out of here sea shanks are now sieging up there's only a couple of stalkers here and they are taking uh, some free hits more sea shanks now sieging up couple up at the top for roar taking down one of the sea shanks of siren looks like another sea shank going down for siren he needs to uh reposition those as carefully as possible and the muta is going to be in taking out one of those units looks like they are going to be joining this main army over here another stalker is going to be falling uh nope looks like it just takes a lot of damage Viking advancing forward to see how much damage it can actually do. A couple of sea shanks ranging down the front over here. It looks like the Muno's coming in here, taking down one of the sea shanks. Every tank counts in this battle. The sea shanks are so crucial. The, and the stalkers trying to get over here, and the Muno's getting nice spotting range for those sea shanks. Be able to rain the fire down on those uh, stalkers and it looks like the mutas are finally getting a little bit of space to be able to come in here, do some additional damage to that a warp gate over there. It looks like here comes the push out from our uh, Protoss player. His Colossus goes down so quickly. Oh no, those Stim Marines need a medevac, but that Colossus was a great hit over there. The Muta's not quite yet doing the damage in the backside, 
and Aurora repairing his sea shanks as quickly as he possibly can, and Cyrene and Attila's food counts are skyrocketing 126. Aurora is at 96, and his allies, Asian Skittles, at 92, uh, trying to get additional Colossus out in the field as well as finishing the range upgrade just now. That first gateway does fall, and... uh. The center gold base being taken by Siren. Very bold move there. He's feeling very far ahead right now. It's going to be really difficult for the UMCP team to actually bust out of this contain. There's so many sea shanks now and marines, and there's even banelings for ground support. Not yet have the uh, baneling uh, movement speed, but uh, banelings are cuter when they move this way. They're like fat children. <laughs> Anyways, the Muta's now engaging this location. Guardian Shield going down, and the Muta's trying to take down the Colossus. Looks like it will be targeted down, and the second Colossus not in range of those stalkers. It's trying to run away as quickly as possible. Down goes another extremely expensive unit. Looks like a couple of Marines also dropping the top here. There is one Sea Shank available uh, to try to hold this off, but it looks like it will fall. And uh, the advantage is continuously going to Siren and his ally Attila. It's so difficult for the UMCP team to actually hold this off. Their money is flying sky high. Asian Skittles up at 1,300 and 400 gas. Roar over here at 2,000 money and 1,300 gas. And it looks like the Mutas are coming in here and are completely wrecking it. Asian Skittles base, those cannons are not going to be enough. The Glaive Worms even bouncing off and hitting the uh, uh, neighboring pylons. A couple of Stalkers trying to get warped in, but all of those probes are screwed. More Marines being dropped in here as well. Sea Shanks hopping up to the high ground and sieging up. And this base, uh, Natural Expansion, is in grave danger as well. Uh, Asian Skittles desperately trying to m warp in more units. A couple of Marines trying to defend it over here, but the Muta count is just so high. The Sea Shanks are creeping into this territory. More Marines getting dropped over here, and the Sea Shanks blast down a few more. And uh, Sea Shanks for Siren now creeping forward. And it soon may be time. Attila is at, up at 150. Food Siren at 155. Their opponents at 79 and 38 for the Protoss player. And it looks like his base will be falling soon. He needs to cancel those uh, those uh, cannons and send the money to his allies so he can produce as much as possible. Um, but here comes the push in. This is going to the, be the final attack. GG out of Agent Skittles and Roar. GG out as GG's out as well. And this game goes to the uh, UMBC team. And uh, UMBC is now up 2-1 against the University of Maryland College Park in the Collegiate Star League Week 6. Season 5, we're going to be headed to MLG Shattered Temple, I think. Or is it Shakuras? I can't remember. I'm going to ask the chat. We're going to be headed into Game 4 in just a moment. <laughs> 